Hi, Alfred Castillo here, Sprinkler Warehouse Pro. And today I'm gonna to share with you how to actually winterize a backflow preventer. As it's currently in its state, you can see that both of my valves are in the open position. So we got supply going into the backflow preventer out to the outlet into the valves. So this is normally the way your sprinkler system will operate. For the winter is where we have to take a little bit of extra measures here to prevent any kind of failures of, that, of this backflow. As the supply runs up into the pre uh, pressure vacuum breaker, we wanna go ahead and turn this valve that's currently on, and you know they're on in the direction of the pipe. So if it's parallel to the pipe, they are on. We're gonna end up turning this particular valve off. We want to ensure that any water that might be in this particular PVB has the opportunity to expand without breaking the valve or the cap. So what we'll do is we're going to relieve, relieve the pressure from what we call here these bleed valves or these cock stops. Right now they are in a closed position as you can see is they're, uh, they're perpendicular with the actual valve itself. We want to go ahead and release these lead valves as you can turn them right now that's closed these ball valves are not a screw all these are are just real simple ball valves that rotate so if i open this is closed it open close it's not a screw so right now that's closed and again in the winterization of this particular uh, backflow preventer we always want to keep them open so any expansion of water will actually flush out over here the next step to to make this particular winterization more effective is to go ahead and utilize insulation. I have a couple of pieces here that I've pre-cut just for the sake of this video, but we'll actually go ahead and you can pick this particular uh, insulation up at Sprinkler Warehouse. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to insulate the supply side first. Now, one of the important things that we want to point out when we're insulating the supply side, many times homeowners will only insulate up to the actual valve itself or up to the brass part. And that's where a lot of homeowners make mistakes is that they do not want to insulate or they don't or they fail to recognize that insulating this particular valve is just as critical. Why is that? As you can see here, uh, this is a particular valve. It's actually the same one that's right in here. I have it open. This is actually in its open position where water flows. You can see here, if you can see right there is the water flows right in through here. Well, when it closes, you can see the, the, the stainless ball valve that is in here it opens and closes. Well, when it closes, we actually have water that is still in that ball valve. And part of that water essentially is just resting now on the sides of the valve itself. Well, if we don't properly insulate this part, you can see what might happen uh, in the event of a hard freeze that that water will expand and you'll get a, 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 it's not really a hairline crack, so you can see it's a, it's a pretty good sized crack. And this is brass, my friends. So this is just what a little water can do if we don't properly insulate that. So that's gonna be really key and important to know when insulating and winterizing your PVB, your backflow preventer, it's important to go ahead and insulate all the way to the, uh, to the actual PVB itself. So you'll see here, I've, I've, uh, you can make the measurements, you can make the cuts uh, using the insulation. And we're gonna go ahead and insulate all the way up to pretty much where the, the uh, PVB starts. So we have the valve insulated, you also have the PVC pipe insulated there. Again, our, uh, our knob is in its uh, position here. Sometimes these knobs will actually rust out and go bad. Uh, we also have a, uh, a kit here where you can actually buy these particular valves right here at the Sprinkler Warehouse made out of stainless steel. So you really have to worry about rust or anything like that. And so once we have this pre-cut and trimmed, insulated, then you can go ahead and get some tape. Now you want to go ahead and try to insulate as much of this particular valve as possible. So as you can see here, it's closed pretty well. I can close that up when I tighten it up. You wanna see if you can cover up the any exposed part. So what we'll end up doing is I'll go ahead and you know, with, with any excess insulation here, you can go ahead and tape and, and just kind of measure out what you need to cut out there. It's a little square there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to fill that gap with, um, with a particular little bit of insulation so that I can close this and then we'll have an effective, actually it's probably a little bit more here. Make it, make it confirm there, here we go. And then we can go ahead and have a very nice tight fit. 
The important thing is you want to make sure that every part of this valve is insulated. And then so with that, we have this uh, particular insulation tape that you can also pick up here at the sprinkler warehouse. And then we'll just go ahead and start insulating from the top. It's important to ensure that we have a good tight fit around there. You want to ensure that you want to wrap it around a couple of times to ensure that you don't have any kind of exposure and to make sure you do have a tight seal around this. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around a couple of times. I'm going to do a little overlap here just to ensure that I do have it completely, completely covered. I'll go ahead and make a nice cut here. to where it is got a little bit exposed there, but no problem. You can just continue to wrap it around if need be. It's okay. And at least with this now, if any water is built up in this particular valve as a result of the closure, with, its, with it being properly insulated, you really don't have to worry now about any type of rupture to the... To. And so the, the important thing is to, is to insulate the supply side, but it's also a good idea to insulate the, the side that actually will go to your valve. And so by doing that, again, you can go ahead and measure, uh, measure some insulation. We want to do the same thing as well. We want to not only measure the actual PVC pipe, but we want to measure the uh, insulation to cover over the actual valve itself for very similar reasons as we're covering the supply side valve. We want to cover the outlet valve as well. So what we'll do is we will also go ahead and continue to wrap up this side here. Once you get a, the measurement, you want to go ahead and go all the way to the PVB. And we're going to go ahead and get this covered. And we also want to see if we can get a good little insulation to cover every part of that valve as possible. Slowly make my way. There's probably another little exposure there that I'll go ahead and address to ensure that it is completely covered. Then I can go ahead and insulate the rest of the pipe by accommodating it. I might have to just snake it in a little bit here to ensure that I got a good wrap, a wrap around. And then I'll just continue wrapping the rest of this particular pipe. And the size as needed. And you can go ahead and finish that off properly insulating it. So there you have it my friends. Now you have the proper winterization technique of a backflow preventer on how to make this winterize with the proper positions on your valves, on your actual valves, which is this is supposed to be closed and this is open, and the proper way to insulate a backflow preventer. Feel free to leave a comment and let us know what other subjects you are interested in learning about. So again, Alfred Castillo here from Sprinkler Warehouse. Whoa.